the most contradictory thing to being a self-reliant survivalist is to be dependent on substances and processes and anything in this society for that matter. Today we're going to talk about addictions in a post-disaster situation. Let's get to it. Alright, so as some of you know, I work in the field of mental health and addiction services. And I see myself more as a motivator than anything. Now, I'm not here to preach to you about how you're a bad person if you have some bad habits. Uh, that's not what the point of this video is all about. Rather, the point of this video is to talk about why any sort of dependence that you might have in your life right now is going to be an impediment in a post-disaster or SHTF scenario. Now, generally speaking, my message probably is going to come off as you should quit any sort of bad habits you have if you really want to consider yourself self-reliant. Because the definition of self-reliant is to not necessarily need anything from the outside world in order to sustain yourself. So if you're dependent on a drug or a process, as we're going to talk about, that technically means that you're not as self-reliant as you could be, and it probably means you're not as holistically healthy as you could be. So this is why I think that survivalism in itself can make people better people. Not just in the people who have a greater survivability in a post-disaster situation. Rather, people who are more well-rounded, healthier, and more productive members of society while the getting's good. Now, what is addiction? Well, addiction, uh, there's a lot of different ways you could define it, but generally speaking, addiction is a dependence on something. It's neurological, it's psychological, and of course, there's a behavioral component to it as well. Generally speaking, there's two types of addiction. There's substance addiction and process addiction. Substance addiction is basically anything that you would ingest in order to have some sort of psychoactive experience. The process addiction is what we call a behavioral addiction. That could be anything from gambling to video games to shopping. Uh, even prepping, in a sense, could be considered a process addiction of sorts. The defining feature of both is that you're dependent on doing it. Your pleasure depends on you continually doing that thing in order to gain some sort of satisfaction. Now, addiction is not inherently a bad thing, I should add. Arguably, some of the most accomplished individuals throughout history were addicted to their craft. If you look at athletes who train 12 hours a day to be number one in the sport that they are partaking in, all of these can be construed as positive addictions. But there is also destructive addictions, and that's what I'm talking about today. And basically, we live in a society nowadays which is highly technologically dependent, we're highly impulsive, we thrive off of instant gratification, you know, we want everything now, you know, a lot of us have been spoiled in a lot of ways and we're very hedonistic in many respects. And everybody wants a quick fix to something, nobody wants to go through the motions in order to deal with whatever problems they might be facing. Everybody would rather take a pill or take the shortest way possible to get instantaneous results. So it's important to remember that if you have addictions now and you carry those addictions over into a post-disaster situation, it's going to be a liability and it's going to put you at a significant disadvantage over people who do not. As a former smoker, this was one of my prime motivations for wanting to stop smoking, was that I wanted to curb that before I had to deal with all the other stresses. Should some disaster, be it local, regional, or global, present itself, I would be preoccupied with the idea of smoking cigarettes, and anybody who smokes knows that you're going to sneak in that cigarette come hell or high water, uh, especially if you were like me and you smoked a pack of cigarettes a day. So you're definitely going to be uh, prioritizing that over some of your base level needs and possibly even the needs of your family and putting them at risk. One of the biggest things that you're going to have to worry about is withdrawal symptoms. So you're going to be suffering the physiological effects of withdrawal, which is going to incapacitate you potentially physically, depending on what substance you're coming off of. 
And of course, that's going to increase the risk to yourself and your family as well. In addition, you're not going to be, have that medical supervision. And a lot of drugs that I'm going to talk about require some sort of medical protocol to be administered when you are withdrawing from those substances. In addition to that, uh, there's going to be emotional instability as a result of this. There's going to be cognitive impairment. There's going to be unpredictable behavior. There's going to be irritability. Uh, of course, the physical sickness. There's going to be uh, decisions that are made which perhaps run counter to the best interests of you or your group. And all of this, of course, is going to compromise your survivability. Now, a very easy way to understand what the effects of withdrawal are from an addict and all withdrawal is is basically the physical emotional and psychological effects that happen when you remove a drug when a person is dependent and addicted to a drug and what dependency means is that you've become at a state of homeostasis or you're chemically balanced when you use the drug so your body is almost at a state of rest you acquire that dependency you build a tolerance and you become chemically dependent on that substance in order to feel normal. Now when you remove that substance, obviously certain neurochemistry is going to be at a deficit and that's going to create all sorts of problems for you. Uh, usually between 72 hours to 30 days are going to be the worst of those effects, but there still is going to be residual effects thereafter. Now you take any drug and an easy way to understand what the withdrawal effects are going to be is that you whatever feeling that drug gives you when you're on it the opposite effect is going to be true when you remove that drug from the situation and i just call this the positive negative effect so the negative effect is opposite the positive effect so when you're using the substance when you remove that substance the opposite is going to be true so what do i mean by that well, if you're a person who chronically smokes marijuana, and I know there's going to be a whole lot of people commenting on the video that say marijuana is not a bad drug. And like I say, I'm not here to demonize or vilify or spew any sort of propaganda about the morality of smoking pot. All I can say is that the marijuana nowadays is a lot more potent than it was. It's not something that you would just find in a farmer's field growing naturally on the mountainside anymore. It's something that's been refined and it's been grown in controlled conditions in order to yield the highest THC content. So there's a significant effect and people will say it's not addictive but whether or not something is addictive is a subject of debate unto itself and that would just make this video far longer than i would like it to be generally speaking the effects of marijuana is a pacifying effect so not only are you probably going to be overly passive if you're smoking it while shit hits the fan when you remove that substance from the equation a lot of people who smoke marijuana get very irritable yeah, you get very emotionally unstable and I can speak to this from experience not only for myself but the people I've known so yes marijuana is more or less an innocuous substance for the most part you're not gonna see the same problems that we associate alcohol with and cocaine and opiates and stuff like that however it still is going to cause problems it's gonna cause you to make poor decisions whether you're on it or you're off of it. You may not be vigilant enough if you're smoking pot and you know things are falling around around you. And you may uh, not react in the appropriate way if you're withdrawing for, from it or you're detoxing from it. So that's something to consider. Another substance is opiates. So people are prescribed prescription painkillers. Uh, some of these are not prescription. There's heroin, there's morphine. Uh, Oxycontin, things of that nature. These are things which you're definitely going to want to shake. If there's any drug that I would say you need to absolutely get some help treating prior to a post-disaster environment, it's these ones. Because it's very challenging for you to come off these substances without some sort of protocol medication and it's going to be agonizing. You're not going to be able to function, especially under a lot of stress in a tense environment where you have to hold your own physically perhaps in a security sense you're not going to be able to get off the floor basically how opiates work is they're painkillers so what happens when you become addicted to opiates is your body stops producing its own natural opiates called endorphins and in doing that you kill off your uh, 
endorphin receptors essentially so that basically when you come off the substance your body is in agonizing pain for at least a week unless you have some sort of protocol medication to take you off of it that's why in that new series uh, fear the walking dead uh, the guy is trying to taper himself down by using this other form of medication. I can't remember exactly what kind of medication it was in the movie. So once again, the effect of opiates is a painkiller. The opposite effect is pain. Another big one that you're going to want to watch out for, and mostly in the withdrawal end of things, but definitely uh, when intoxicated as well, is alcohol. Alcohol is one of those substances that you can actually die if you're detoxing from it, if you're highly dependent on it and you don't have the right medical supervision. Depends on how much you've been using, of course. But alcohol is also one of those things that can make you make very poor decisions and put yourself at risk in a uh, survival situation. So you're certainly not going to want to be uh, addicted to alcohol come shit hits the fan. Another thing that you want to consider is antidepressants. Obviously, if you're dependent on those and you run out and of course you can't go and fill a prescription, if society is collapsing all around you, then you're going to be probably the opposite effect, which is very depressed and you're probably going to become suicidal, to be honest. The same goes for antipsychotics, anti-anxiety medication. If you're dependent on psychotic medication, uh, chances are you're going to become more psychotic when you're not on that medication and such will be the fate of all the individuals who are struggling with the severe uh, mental health problems such as schizophrenia and uh, the more extreme forms of schizoaffective and bipolar disorder these things are going to be highly problematic and a lot of these individuals unfortunately without the proper care are not going to fare that well under those conditions Another one to consider is cocaine or stimulants such as crystal meth. To a lesser extent, of course, we could talk about caffeine and nicotine. However, the main ones are going to be crystal methamphetamine and cocaine. Now, these are uppers. They're called stimulants because they give you energy or at least give you the illusion of energy. And basically, the opposite effect of that, of course, is going to be fatigue. So anybody who's on crystal meth, of course, is... Uh, obviously very wired they don't sleep for long periods of time uh, if there's any drug I would encourage people to crit and I would preach about is crystal meth it's just a very damaging substance and it's one of those substances it's hard to bounce back from once you're hooked on it once again you're gonna be incapacitated to defend yourself and of course meet your base level needs and I would say that people who are struggling with the uppers and downer addiction, those are going to be the biggest security liabilities because those are the most intense forms of addiction. I mean, alcoholics, uh, yes, as you've seen in the movie The Walking Dead, when Bob went out of his way to, uh, you know, try to keep the zombies from grabbing his backpack because he had a bottle of alcohol in it. Okay, that's one thing. But, you know, he wasn't going out and seeking just that. It was kind of circumstantial that that happened. Whereas I think somebody who's using hard narcotics is certainly going to be more prone to putting themselves and others at risks in order to get that substance. Because those substances are highly addictive. You need to understand crystal methamphetamine, for instance, boosts your dopamine levels 1200%. Dopamine is the chemical that makes you feel excited and pleasurable and makes you feel interested in what you're doing. In a 1200% deficit of that, all you want is that drug. So it becomes very overriding in terms of all your behavior. Now, as I said before, there's other process addictions like gambling, sex, online activity, things of perhaps lesser severity. And those things, of course, also are going to have negative detrimental effects in your psyche, mostly by way of emotional effects. Of course, there's not going to be a lot of physical effects to process addiction withdrawal, but it's more going to be emotional, mental, and whatever the case may be, it's going to put you at a disadvantage once again in a post-disaster situation. So as I said, I could talk about this stuff for hours in terms of what the causes of addiction are and how you should treat addiction. If you have any questions in particular, feel free to fire them my way. I'd be more than happy to do my best to answer those questions. Generally speaking, when we look at the causes of addiction, you're looking at cultural contributors, you're looking at genetics, you're looking at the psychosocial 
dislocation aspect, which just means that people were not necessarily originally meant to live in these massive metropolis cities as, as a way to make up for all the shortcomings of that from a tribalistic communal perspective. We've uh, merged towards these instant gratification like addictions. And of course, there's peer pressure, uh, things of that nature, which also come into play, the cultural components. The genetic link is tenuous at best, but uh, it's certainly something that they're learning more about every day. So, my main message of this video is look, if you want to be the best person you can be, the best prep you can possibly work on right now is your mind, your body. Those two things need to be in tip top shape. If you have a bad habit right now that you're struggling with, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person necessarily. Like I say, uh, there's a whole schwack of causes to this and I think every one of us at one point or another is gonna have some sort of propensity to become addicted, especially under times of stress. And if you're gonna deal with the stress of a post-disaster situation in an effective way, you're going to have to be the most well-rounded version of yourself that you can possibly be. And once again, the most contradictory thing to being a self-reliant survivalist is to be dependent on substances and processes and anything in this society for that matter. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns or criticisms, feel free to comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.